was a smooth transition of volume. Hi, welcome to Wallpaper and that. That uh, anonymous looking black box, which you can just read the name, is like reflected off the, oh, it's a Bucart. So, these are not Bucart speakers. These are our triangle 40th anniversaries. And this is weird because uh, apparently Bucart has come out with an integrated amplifier. Integrated amplifier being an amplifier, like a power amplifier, you can it blow it, but volume control and input select and not a tuner. I think of it as a tuner, that's something else entirely. And it's very, very, very black. Single, I, I probably got a, where's my ball? Let's sit on my ball. This is ear views. If you've never been here before, which is probably at least a hundred people, right? Every review is their first review. Hi, I'm Zeos Pantera. This is my basement, and we're going to talk about audio crap. Um, although I think the word crap shouldn't apply because this is twenty six hundred dollars US, and it's very good. But then again, these are also twenty five hundred dollars speakers and four hundred dollars stands. There's also a subwoofer hooked up. We'll get to it. Um, so Bukart, Denmark, but a lot of their new electronics are coming out of China. Oh fuck, this thing is so heavy. Um, you see why it's heavy? The top and fascia are one giant piece of, I, I think they want to say it's aluminum, but it feels heavier than that. Steel chassis full of holes. Oh my God, it's legit heavy. It's got some, some feet in it that look like a receiver from the 1990s, which is kind of nice. Here is your fascia, your volume control here. There should be a copyright fleet playlist, by the way. If it gets banned, fuck them. Beautiful lights. Oh, you don't like how bright the lights are? Hold on, let me just dim them down by doing that. So now they're dimmer. Well, eventually it'll get out of this mode. God, it's so heavy. Oh, it's so heavy. Okay, I'll put this back there. <laughs> well, I yanked out a speaker wire. That's bad. It's bad news bears. Anyway, so yeah. Ah, Jesus, this thing weighs like 17 pounds. I forget how much it weighs. It's more than a little. Volume indicators here, power button, which uh, no, no lights will stay on while it's playing except for the source indicator. If you adjust the volume on the remote or with this beautiful, beautiful digital knob, um, those will eventually just go off. So you hold power to, and turn that to adjust the brightness of all the LEDs. I had it up super bright. Here's your input select line, optical one, optical two, coaxial, USB, and Bluetooth. We're currently on Bluetooth from my phone. Um, we have to look at the back of this. Two subwoofer outs, two. Um, controllable subwoofer out. One of the, I was like, all right, $2,700 is a little bit like, or $2,660 something dollars is a little bit so what are you doing for me, Bucart? The volume, by the way, is analog. Internally, it's switching analog, even though it's a digital knob and a digital remote. It is an analog volume. They're big on that. You get an analog pre-out, so you could use this to just pre-out to anything you want. You could have a pre-out to tube amps. You could have a pre-out to a headphone amp, because you are gonna be using the DAC inside of this if you want. Uh, optical one and two, two opticals, one coaxial. Here's your Bluetooth antenna. Here's your USB input, which can be used as a source or to update the firmware. Power plug, by the way, beautiful. Look at this beautiful power plug. This did not come with a unit. This is a hospital grade plug that I got from Monoprice. I'll link that in the description. Giant five-way binding post using these very, very rare, uh, rare earth mica speaker cables. I say they're rare earth because they're rare to find them on, in stock on earth. Um, I believe this is the Bluetooth module. And wait, this is the Bluetooth antenna. So what the fuck are you? So what are you? That Oh, are you just there to keep it from hitting the wall? I don't know what the purpose of this is, but it's here. So it, it's pretty basic on the back. Power, speaker outputs, only four. There isn't an A and B channel. This mysterious box, engineered in D Denmark, made in China. Uh, coaxial, optical, optical, USB. Line in. I think I might have skipped line in. So you have an analog line in. You get your pre-outs, you get your two subwoofer outs, which as far as I can tell, don't have a difference. Like you just have two subwoofers if you want. That's nice of them. I have it uh, going all the way over to the Martin Logan Dynamo 400, which is like my area sub for this space, if I'm not using the double 300s. 
and that's basically the tour of the unit. Oh, Jesus. I was looking for the instruction manual. Little Allen key because you have to install batteries in the remote. The remote takes AAA batteries, by the way. Here is the remote. If you've never seen a Bucart review, which I always like, it's weird because I start a review. I'm like, ah, oh, people have seen that one. They know what I, I don't have to explain it. Here's the remote. I've added felt tape to the back of this just to make it so it doesn't slide off of like my pants. See, look, see how it doesn't slide off my pants. That's a fucking life hack. I have life hacks on my uh, other channel. Um, so yeah, it's a beautiful aluminum remote. Now, next track, last track, play pause works with, I know it works with Bluetooth. I don't know if it'd work with USB. I'm not gonna USB it to my laptop. You got up, down, left, right. Up and down is volume. You have the same indicators here are the indicators here for volume. And it isn't just like one, two, three, four, five. Every one of these will dim and then proceed to dim the next one down for multiple steps of volume. Many, many steps. I actually was reading the firmware updates that this thing had. And one of the firmware updates I did is they made What's nice about having it be internally analog, but externally all digitally controlled, is they made it so that there's more usable volume. Like where you would probably use it is more of the spectrum. So like super hyper quiet is like three three or four presses. And then it starts getting into actual listening volume. And then it's like, oh fuck, you sure you wanna get that high and loud? Ah. Um, left and right will do your inputs. It's strange. I have the A700s and the A500s, and they use the same remote. So there's individual LEDs all the way down. But since they're not using this for that many inputs, every other one is skipped. So if we are currently on Bluetooth, we hit left, it'll go USB, coaxial, optical two, optical one, and line. Right now, I'm just going to get this out of the way. If you've used any of the Bucart stuff, you know they have the hubs and the stereo hubs, and you, you, know, you pair your speakers to it wirelessly, blah, blah, blah. Those all have Wi-Fi connectivity. Like it'll show up on your network as a Wi-Fi device. And I've been using that quite a bit because when you send something to it Wi-Fi, it's basically lossless. And this unit doesn't have Wi-Fi, it's just Bluetooth. I mean, you've got all the other inputs, but of all the things to miss out on having a Wi-Fi WISA connection, or at least Wi-Fi connection, it wouldn't be WISA, it would just show up as a Wi-Fi device so that you could tell your Spotify, yeah, use this. This doesn't have that. Kind of disappointed in that. But yeah, that's a basic remotes uh, control. Whenever you move it, like if you leave it alone, the lights will all turn off. In fact, let's turn the light. If I turn the knob on the unit, the lights and the remote all pair. Because this is a Wi-Fi remote. So, it, oh, that's what it's gotta be. Because this is still a Wi-Fi remote. I could put this, you know, under here and it'll all still control. It doesn't need visual confirmation. It'll work for like 50 feet away. But, and the lights will go on and then you put it down and it eventually goes off. But if you shake it, it comes back on. And you might want to keep that little tool to change the batteries handy because when I had the A500s in use up in my room, uh, the batteries lasted like three months of constant, like every night I'm using this as my remote. So every time you move it, the, the LEDs pop on. Specs for power, um, 150 watts per channel, eight ohm, 300 watts per channel, four ohms so it's not a weak amplifier 150 watts like real 150 watts and these trust me this is a real 150 watts it's pretty fucking good the internal designs if you look at the pictures of it i don't have the pictures in my magic hand book here look no um they have separated the power supply from the rest of the unit it does get moderately warm like warm like i don't think it'll keep a sandwich ready for eating but it'll it'll certainly like warm your hands in the winter if you put it on your desk. Again, it weighs like 17 million pl pounds. Plenty of space up here, by the way, if you bought one and you were artistically inclined, you could just paint a beautiful landscape. Maybe like a river and a train coming through a tunnel. I just, I like, I like when canvases are not normal things, just paint on this. So what should we talk about now? Subwoofer integration, maybe sound quality. Cause here's the thing. I've got a lot of amplifiers. I got this Marantz monoblocks. I got those Taxaridis devices, uh, Achilles tubes. I, I recently had that phase linear here. Um, wait, phase linear? No. Accuphase? Accuphase. I own a phase linear. It was an Accuphase. I'm, I'm fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. And this is quite 
right up there with all the high-end amps I've listened to. You're not buying this because you want the absolute pinnacle, cleanest, raw dog amplifier. Bucart's a little different. Bucart will sell you something not because it's simple, but because it's beautiful and complicated. This has an app because, of course, it has an app. Bucart has an app. Um, we'll put that down. I'm going to fall up my ball and I'll just get up. I'll just get up. Fine. Be like that. Is that a racing Prius with an anime girl and a cat? Okay, so that is apparently, that's what you would listen to in a racing Prius with a ground girl and a cat. So, currently playing Spotify, we'll switch to optical input, which will give me flack off the computer, even though it really doesn't matter to you people on YouTube, it just matters to my ears. If we switch over, go to the home page, actually I'm gonna reload the entire Bucard app. Minimize everything. Girl with a microphone, great. Bucard app, here we go. Since this doesn't have Wi-Fi, like the A700s and A500s, they're a Wi-Fi hub, so as long as the hub's plugged in, you can access it. This will only connect when the Bluetooth is active and connected between it. So I have the options of the A700 hub upstairs, or the i150. Why is it called the i150? 150 watts per channel? Is that why it's called the i150? But and by the way, the i is a capital I, and you can't tell if it's an L at first. It was very confusing. So here's the main thing once you're connected to it. You get your volume control up here, which if you touch this, it'll control the volume there. It doesn't show the volume of the remote when you control the volume here. It just shows the volume there. That's fine. Um, you can also press to jump between it. If you want to change which device, you press the top. You can turn it off. There's a settings that's basically pair the remote because when you get this unit, you have to pair the remote by holding something and then moving the remote around to say, hey, I'm here, and then it will do that. Um, max volume, you can set a max volume, which is actually nice. These are pretty, like, not efficient speakers. Like, I can get them to like 95%, and it's like, do I wanna go 100? So I wouldn't put a limitation on it, but if you had super efficient speakers, big towers, that would be nice to not blow them up. Um, you can also check for updates and do a factory reset. Now back to the main screen, we've got play, pause, next track, last track, which will control. God, I hope this is actually a copyright free playlist. Be fucked up if this was just a playlist labeled copyright free music and I'm just gonna get copyright claims over and over and over again. A little laggy to play, pause, you know, versus like straight on the app if I was like. So that's fine. Um, Bluetooth is connected. It has Bluetooth visibility hidden. Let me tell you what that is. Because it's like, okay, I wanna make the Bluetooth visibility unhidden, visible. When you do that, it puts it into pairing mode. Oh, real quick, before I forget, because it took me like 25 minutes. I didn't wanna download the manual. I couldn't find the paper manual because it was underneath it because I'm an idiot. Um, trying to get it to connect to Bluetooth, I thought I'd just put it into the Bluetooth mode and it would automatically pair. That is not the case. Put it into Bluetooth mode and then hold the next track button on the remote for five seconds. If you hold the OK button for five seconds, which I tried, um, the whole unit goes into a factory restart mode. Great. And if you hold the power button for five seconds, it waits for five seconds and turns off the unit. So yeah, so that's how you pair. You hold down the right arrow. See, lights come back on, I didn't touch anything. So that's the first screen, the basic screen. Volume, next track, last track, play, pause. Again, if we're on optical or something, it's not gonna matter. The second menu, this is where this amplifier goes. Oh, that's why it's $2,700. Although you can get a lot of these features, they're relatively basic if you have a surround receiver. Surround receiver, you, you get it, they cost you know four or 500 bucks. They've got nine channels of amplification. They're all 150 watts channel, blah, blah, blah. We've all got apps. But to have a actual well-made, well-designed, well-engineered audio file uh, integrated amplifier that has the ability, you can see here's a couch. In fact, the, the, it's exact replica of this couch. And then you have two speakers and a subwoofer. Now, when you press a speaker, this comes up and it says high pass distance. And then you have a volume adjustment that will only go down so it starts at zero and then you can bring it to negative five, negative 0.5 decibels all the way down to, I don't even know how low it'll go. And then you hit okay and it updates. So you can actually calibrate 
distance and I checked it. If I put this at two meters and that at four meters, it's completely fucking weird. Um, and cutoff. I have a low pass filter on these $2,500 speakers, or a high pass filter, I should say, on these $2,500 speakers. Because if I press the subwoofer, we have a negative 1.5 decibel, low pass of 60 hertz with a distance of 3.1 meters. If we walk over here, over there, that's the Dynamo 400 subwoofer. That just happens to be where it sounds best in the room. If you don't know about the subcrawl, search the subcrawl either on this channel or somewhere else. You just walk over here. Okay, so you got also a choice of zero or 180 degrees uh, polarity in case you just need to invert the phase of the sub. Hit okay, we're good to go. Underneath all of this is a little on off tab that says low level enhancement and you have a slider that goes from zero to 10 to 20. And you can put it anywhere along that line. And I don't know what that does because it's not in the manual, but when I have it off, if I'm playing music, which we can go back to this and just hit play and we can hope that we do pray. Next track. Right there. It's a good, we got a good some techno music going on. Put on low level enhancement. Okay, so. Where's my actual remote to pause this? Pause. Let's pause it in the app. So, all right, for some reason the remote didn't pause it, maybe because I'm in the app and I'm controlling with the app, I don't know. So, low level enhancement does something that I can't quite grasp because it doesn't sound like I've got the sub as a separate unit anymore. It does some weird integration. This is Bucart we're talking about. They, they do shit, like the master tunings, are absurd if you don't know what the master tunings are they don't have anything to do with this particular unit but the self-powered speakers of the a500 a700 which i'm gonna bring the a700s down in a bit put them here it's gonna be amazing um you can reload different dsps to correct them but they're all fucking odd strange like 3.5 front bat you know this is for desk and this is what we think is good and this is what you already eat with pasta so they're a little bit crazy in denmark and i don't know what the fuck this low level enhancement is doing because it's not a bass boost. It isn't just boosting the bass or a more bass boost. It's actually creamifying the bass into like a coherent narrative. It feels like it's taking like an octave out of the, the mid range, mid bass, and then mixing it in with the sub and then somehow integrating that low end into these. Even though I've got these set to not go, you know, below 60, somehow it all just sounds better. I have it on. Like, I wasn't going to have it on because I'm like, I don't want to have any low-level enhancement. I'm purist, a pure as heart. Look at my anime girls. They're all pure as heart. But I put it on and I'm like, oh, and 20 is like too much of whatever the fuck magic sauce it is. And 10 was like just too much. So I brought it down to like six. You have to count. It doesn't show you where you are, but you and it's six. So now I've got the distance set for the speakers. I got the subwoofer set with the crossover with a negative 1.5 decibels down. So that automatically is amazing. You can actually set the crossover without the app. If you don't wanna use the app, a lot of the stuff is still available. You can't do balance control. Like this will do balance control because I can literally set that one just be lower. So you can do balance on this. But if you wanted to set the crossover on the sub, by the way, here's the instruction manual. This is how you know it's Denmark and not like every other company because this is an eight page manual, right? Eight page PDF. Last page is blank. First page is a cover. Six page PDF manual. First three pages are safety instructions. So it literally says, um, do not use this amplifier near water and do not block ventilation and don't defeat any of the things, and blah, blah, blah. So that means three more pages down. Now it's a three-page manual. And these three pages are introduction, quick start, remote, rear panel, front panel, and then instructions, and that's it. Three pages. Because I think you could figure out not to put this in water, right? If you buy this and you still need the instructions to tell you not to put it in water, you probably shouldn't have bought it. Tell someone else to deal with your money, right? You're, you have wildly too much money for someone who doesn't understand not to put this in the sink and try to use it. Um, 
So yeah, if you want to, I, the only reason I found out about the adjust LED intensity is press and hold power button and rotate the volume knob. So let's, let's do that again. So you have to hold this and turn this and all the, all the LEDs will get so bright. Which if you're using this in like a, a theater or like a, a, you know, watching with TV with it, you want it to kind of be dimmer. Because every time you change the volume, that comes on at whatever intensity and then thing goes away. I wish it also faded away. Coming on quickly or coming on like a, with a half a second dim and then fading out for a second will be nice. It doesn't do it. Um, so yeah, the other thing you could do is select crossover frequency on speakers. So you could do this without the remote. Press and hold the power and press source to select crossover frequency and then the input LEDs on the right between line, optical, optical, coaxial, USB, and Bluetooth will then indicate um, if you're on the line output, that's flat, flat out to the, to the speakers. But then you could adjust to 40 hertz, 60 hertz, 80 hertz, 120 and 100 and 120 hertz with that. So it, just the most basic, that doesn't have anything to do with the sub. There's no sub adjustments in this, just the speakers if you wanna cut off the speakers. I don't know if it'll automatic, actually, you know what? When I adjusted it, I think it automatically sets whatever you set the speakers to, to the subwoofer thing, but you can go in the app and change them to be different. So yeah, there's your three pages of that. This is basically this part of the app. We go to the next thing. Again, fucking app. You're looking at this because you want a quality amplifier that's built well, that has an app. Room equalization, manual EQ. Now, there's a, a bit of a kerfuffle with the room EQ, because if I go to it, it tells me how to do things with my phone. It says, you know, you put your phone on, you hit go, and you do this for 60 seconds around the room with, I think, what's the distance? Say, hold on, they tell me. Stand 1.5 meters or more away from the speakers for optimum room measurements. Don't be between the phone and the speaker. Uh, it'll put for you, and then the instruction is do it for 60 seconds. Got it? Great. Ready? Let's do this. Begin. Oops. Please connect the Zen microphone before recording. I have an Android device. Because Android devices vary wildly from Samsung and Xiaomi and fucking Sony and Motorola, that automatic fucking do is only for iPhone 6 and above. So you have an iPhone 6 and above, the app will go, I'm an iPhone 7 and every iPhone 7 has the same microphone. They basically made it so it's easy for them or else they'd have to know what the microphone profiles are for every phone on the fucking earth and said they just went with captain fucking apple and they're done with it oh by the way um i bought uh, a six pack of these these are little bubble levels i originally bought it for my laser level to level my laser level before i used it but now i've got them on top of these speakers because slight mid-review re-review of those canto stands those canto stands are 405 dollars and when Canto sent them to me, I didn't know that. But then I started building them like, holy fuck, these are nice. And then I realized all the fucking tricks and tips. So the reason there's a, a bubble level on it is because you can take an Allen key and through the top, adjust the legs to level it. And that one was crooked because I'm on a basement floor and concrete is not consistent on basement floors. So I literally were able to go through the top and just go and bring that speaker level. Just something to say about that really fucking nice all metal beautiful speaker stands linked in the description so anyway i can't do anything unless i have a zen microphone whatever the fuck that is because i looked a little bit i couldn't see anything but if i have a bluetooth if i connect a zen microphone to my phone i think or maybe bluetooth to it and then i can do the thing but i can't do it because android right now so ha 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 so anyway no room correction for me but, you know, you could do that with the big boot carts and then apparently these, which is fucking wild. If you have, I mean, someone's been telling me, just go to, uh, go to eBay and buy a shitty old iPhone that someone, you know, put up their ass and they put it on eBay. No, pass. Um, however, there's nothing stopping me from going into the manual EQ section where I've actually built a profile uh, with the editor and I've added a high shelf of 400 hertz, a low shelf of 60 hertz and a parametric EQ bump of two decibels at 1000 hertz. And that's what that looks like. And I can, I can, I can reload any preset I want. Save filter, no, I don't want to space. I want to, I actually have it off. I could turn off any of these things or I could throw it away and I could add another one. I have the filter type options of parametric EQ, low shelving, high shelving, 12 decibel high pass or six decibel high pass. Let's do a six decibel high pass. There you go. Let's add that in. 
and you hit save and then it'll do it. Unfortunately, while you're adjusting, it doesn't auto update. You have to hit save, it has to load, it pushes it there, and then your speakers will sound fucking weird because you're messing around with parametric key. But you can do parametric, I don't even know how many of these you can add. Like, honestly, I, I haven't dicked around with it enough. Oh, and you could type in, so here, 45, 4, 45, no, it can only go 10 to 10. So here, eight decibels back, eight decibels down. So now there's at what frequency. And if you don't want to manually adjust, like 10 plus 10, you could just hit, where is it? Where, you hit that and you just type in. So I want it um, 100, 1337 frequency. And now I have negative eight gain at 1337 frequency, hit save. And there you go. It's added that into the list of parametric equalization. Like, what the fuck? That's that. That's a mini DSP level shit. It's a little bit more difficult to get it around, but it works. And you could save up to three presets and you could turn off the editor and it'll just give you the one. So now I have a parametric there and there. So if we go back to the home screen and I hit play again. That sounds weird. Can I sit? Remix. Yoga balls make the best footrest, by the way. So yeah, this has, if you can do room correction, you can do room correction. If you want to actually futz with a parametric equalization in your amplifier, because we're using the digital imp inputs of the amplifier. If you use the analog inputs of the amplifier, it's obviously going to reconvert those analog inputs to digital, and then you're going to do all this fuckery, and then it's going to pop it back out analog through the actual speaker outs, and you're good to go. So this is what you're paying for, because very few things have this ability, this sort of customizability where you can come in here and add more filters. And then I want to do, I want to do a parametric EQ or a frequency response. I don't know, 5,582 uh, Hertz. And I want a Q value of, of, four, of you know, 14. That's going to be fun. And then the, the gain of negative six. Go. And there it is. A little dip. It's a little fucking dip. Hit save, and now it's added to that pile of things. So now we've got three of them there. Okay. So this will work for any speaker and any subwoofer or any two subwoofers. So that, while as clean and precise and Danish as it looks, you have all these inter. You could just fuck with it internally. With no mulling about in the front, just all. In the, it's actually a really well made app. In fact, I'm gonna go back, and it's gonna do the loading screen. I love that. It literally fills with water, and the Bugatti logo goes up, and you pick between which one you want. Like I just want all my apps to do that, and then it shows you're connected because it pops all the uh, volume lights on there. So I guess I should get to how it sounds. Well, I've already covered that, haven't I? I said it's going to sound as good as any high-end amplifier you've ever used. But most high-end amplifiers you have don't have a subwoofer out. Certainly not two. The DAC in it is, I think, uh, it's an it's a Saber DAC because everything's a Saber DAC now until AKM gets to ship back together. But as far as actual listening, I, I, I wouldn't want to change anything about it. I'm going to see if I change tracks. I did shut off that EQ, right? I'm pretty sure I did. If I didn't, I'm the greatest EQ designer on earth. Yeah, no. reason the pause isn't working as well let's see hold on hit play pause all the volume lights come on but it doesn't unpause hit next track it unpauses and goes to next track hit last track goes to last track hit pause strange i think if i'm not in this app i think if i actually have the spotify app selected and i hit play pause no Double tap, long press. Now, I've gotten it to pause and work before. 
It's just one of those like, oh, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi over Bluetooth, Bluetooth Wi-Fi, great. So yeah, I don't think there's anything else I could say that's negative about this. It's pricey. Bucart knows its audience. Although that 2,500 euro, AKA 2,600 US dollars it is, is 500 euros less if you've ever bought Bucart passive speakers or you buy this with Bucart passive speakers. So they have their like family incentive. If you go to the website, do I have to actually get up? I'm gonna get up. Let me get up. Why am I sitting? God, Zero Views is only supposed to be sitting when I'm at the review desk. This is America, damn it. Anyway, there are the $409.99 uh, Canto SX26W stands, because they're 26 inches tall. Apparently, if you get them 22 inches tall, they're only $369. What the fuck good is a 22 inch stand? Um, if we come over here, yeah, you get the option to say price, original or Bucart family, which is 500 less. But unless you are in their system under your account as having purchased a passive set of speakers, like the 300s or 400s, S300s or 400s, um, it will cancel it unless you have it in your cart as well, and it'll just cancel your order. So for anyone who's just gonna put this on their normal speakers, you're gonna pay a little bit more. Uh, that's, this is, I'm pretty astonished by how well it all integrates. The fact that I can plug a subwoofer into this, and that's one of my biggest things. Like there are $200 SMSL amps that you can just plug a subwoofer into. The LOX GA30 is an amplifier you can just plug a subwoofer into. And you would think on some, it was like one amplifier ever in the history of fucking cheap amplifiers where it did the correct thing. When you plug a subwoofer into an amplifier, a cheap amplifier, a lot of times it just takes whatever signal it's getting, makes it mono and shits it out to the sub. And that's it. And you deal with the subs control. I have that sub maxed out and the frequency range all the way up because all the subwoofer controls are happening here. Happening here. This is where they happen. And the fact that I could then go and parametrically EQ and fix the sub at that level, along with the speakers, like what else, what else do you want in an integrated ho uh, home theater? I would call it home theater, but it's really not. It's definitely more for like exactly this. It's for sitting 2.1 meters away from your expensive speakers on your expensive stands, listening with a subwoofer in the room. The only other thing I would like to have is the ability to quickly turn off the sub and put these back to flat. Because without the app, like there's, there's, I can set it to flat on the front of the unit, but I can't turn off the sub unless I unplug the sub. Once the sub is in, it's on. If, if I unplug the sub, let me see if it actually affects the app. I didn't actually test this. So this will be, we're gonna go through this together. If I go here, which shows the sub, if I just unplug this, And if I go back and then reload the app by hitting the back button, let it fill up. I just love how smooth that is. Oh, good. Oh, good. It's not there anymore. This has happened earlier, too, where it's just like, mm, no, nah, I'm not going to bother. What I had to do for this last time, let's see if it works this time, is take it, hit the left and right, take it off. Let's bring it to coaxial or optical one. By the way, there's also a mute on this. There's power, mute, your volume. Forgot about the mute. Anyway, that was my computer pushing flack through optical. Let's go back to the Bluetooth. Let's go back to make sure it's on. Yes, we are connected. Back again. That's a wallpaper. Load this again and hopefully, please, God, just work. Please be there. It isn't. It just isn't. Well, there it is. End of the review. No, it'll pop back up. It's just, it's a, it's one of those fancy amps that does fancy things. And if you have to use an app, you got to make sure. I wish it was Wi-Fi. That's the one thing. I want nothing more from audio. Like, it doesn't sound like a tube amp, but I could always pre-out it to a tube amp. And you could just adjust the equalization to fit whatever you want out of it. And then it comes down to the point of like, well, am I listening to this? Or am I just playing with it? Because I want to just play with this. Like, it's a cool little piece. And it certainly looks the part of, like, a $2,600 
um, Danish designed, Chinese made. Uh, spe you know what's a stupid name? Parsibal. Also, let me end this damn review. Now the camera battery has decided to kill itself. So, boot cart I-150. Uh, not L-150, I-150. It's $2,600. It's Danish designed, but not Danish made. It has an app. It has DSP correction. It has room correction if you have an Apple phone, which I don't. Or it doesn't work on an iPad, by the way. If you have an iPad, you still need to get an Apple phone. Uh, it's powered. I have, I think, three or four different speakers. I actually have not yet put a set of Bucart speakers on it. I figured the triangles would be good enough, and also those little baby Ascend acoustics. Uh, I might roll out a tower for it, or bring this somewhere else and try it there. Because I feel like this is too nice to just abandon in my basement. Because I know Matt's. He doesn't want this back. He's like, oh, Steven, you good man. You send you every... I don't, know how, I don't know how Danish accents work. And I've never actually spoken to him. But I feel like that's what he would say in his heart. But you do good with this. Very nice. Big time. So I'm like, oh, oh, I definitely will. Very nice. Big time. I, I, like, I don't want to put it in my bedroom with my ohms because then it would just be an, a, a, a fucking $2,600 amplifier on the floor of my bedroom. So I've got to find an actual usable location for this where I'm going to be able to appreciate it. I feel like maybe if I do an upstairs setup, like in the actual mezzanine, like way up, this would be the thing to put up there because you want people to see it. And I want to stick out my wife who's all the top of it. Anyway, uh, link to this in the description, link to the speakers, the speaker stands, the sub, those mica cables, that beautiful power cord. I don't know. The wallpaper, the wallpaper hoard is available also if you want to know. You would have had that wallpaper exactly when I changed it to prep for this review two days ago if you were in the wallpaper hoard on Resilio Sync. So you can go into that. Um, Patreon and subscribe start see reviews early. Participate in yard sales. Uh, fund this goddamn channel. My, my driveway got done. Thank you very much, everyone, because every little bit of money I can get from everything, yard sales, selling my monitors, went into paving that 565-foot fucker. Um, although they had to do compacted stone on top for reasons. This is drainage. Apparently drainage is a thing. Um, if you join the Patreon for $5 a month, A, you get to see reviews early. Uh, the yard sales happen from the 1st to 10th of every month, and I do ship internationally for half the price of shipping and free shipping to the United States and Canada. So if you're in Canada and you bid on an item, I will just ship it to you because apparently UPS has really decent rates up to Canada. And uh, the $10 tier, if you join for $10 a month, you get in a private behind the scenes Telegram chat, ask me any questions you want. Uh, and then you also get into a lifetime swap me chat once you're in the $10 chat. So paying $10 gets you into a lifetime swap me chat. If you want to sell your gear, there's some fucking insanely expensive gear in there. Like... There's people in there who have actually actively bought like $6,000 headphones. And I'm just like, I wouldn't do that. I would just get them from the company. And then I'd be like, oh my God, these are too expensive for me to even touch. But there's people who have them and they want you to have them. And if you have them and you want to sell them, swap means the place to be. Um, check out Haifa Guides and the Haifa Guides forum. And uh, Waifus Forever. And that wallpaper. And we're done. I like sitting on this ball. Don't hit yourself in the nuts. That's the worst day you could have. Anyway, thank you to Bukar for sending this out. I will find a way to use it at least three times a year in a video. Maybe four times a year. But maybe five times a year. And I, no, I will not buy a goddamn iPhone. I fucking refuse. No, 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 no.